to the Pittsburgh Steelers, 9-7-1 and one last year. Ben Roethlisberger is out. Mitchell Trubisky is in. They've drafted Kenny Pickett. And the storyline here is when do we see Kenny Pickett overtake Mitchell Trubisky? Because it, it, it appears as though it's Trubisky's season to start. And then if things go the way that many are predicting, we see Pickett inserted into the lineup in late October, early November. But this is also a Steelers team that with an awful season, awful season from Ben Roethlisberger, we saw them in the postseason last year. They, they have extreme talent in, in um, T.J. Watt on the defensive side of the football. Um, Najee Harris. Najee Harris is going to uh, receive even more work, you would think, given their quarterback situation. Um, at running back, I, I'm saying uh, getting the football in the run game because he was certainly used in the pass game last year. Uh, they bring over Miles Jack from Jacksonville. Um, while I don't think they win the division, I don't think it's out of the question to think that they're exactly where they were a year ago, battling for a final playoff spot as not a, a, an average to below average team at best, but still grinding their way to a chance at a playoff game. And I, I'm solely basing this off of the fact that I'm that big of a fan of Mike Tomlin and what he's done. It, it, it's, they, they don't bottom out. They, the, they don't bottom out as an organization. This may be the single most underplayed storyline in the NFL in conversations, team-by-team uh, -team conversations. They had the worst run defense in the league last year by game and by carry. Stephon Tewitt retires. If they can't fix that, none of this other stuff matters. And historically, it's unheard of. I mean, yeah. Pittsburgh can always stop well, the run. So if they can't get back to basics on stopping the run, trouble. If they can, then all of these things come in. And like you're saying, I don't know that they're going to be fourth, fifth in the, in the playoff thing. But they can certainly, again, contend for that seventh spot where they were last year, mm -hmm. even if the quarterback play is poor, if they can play Steeler football, run the ball, defend the run. But last year they didn't defend the run at all. Yeah, that, to me, this is not a team that I would put ahead of of Cincinnati not or Baltimore. Any of the teams. Um, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't put them ahead of any of the teams. that They're last in that division. I have the utmost respect for Mike Tomlin and that organization. And it is very difficult for me to say these words about Pittsburgh, but I'm burying them this year. That's going to be a bad football team in that division. Um, I don't see any other way around it other than, Hutton, what you're saying, that it's just a team and a franchise that does, seemingly doesn't bottom out, and they're not going to ever bottom out with Mike Tomlin. But every other sign to me, Mitch Trubisky at quarterback, uh, the losses that we saw there, if they're breaking in Kenny Pickett, at yeah. some point, even though I really like Kenny Pickett as a quarterback, he's not stepping in and lighting the league on fire. I, I think this is a pretty dramatic step down this year for Pittsburgh, and this is now the beginning of a rebuilding effort for them. I, I don't love them, but I would say this. If you're picking a surprising team, they would be the least surprising, surprising team because of Tomlin and because of what they tend to and, do. And you, you would also say they have a first-round quarterback that took over in this scenario to me. I don't see Trubisky taking them on the, the run of winning the division. It would To me, it's the rookie coming in and just lighting the league on fire. But I, so far, and it's extremely early in camp as we talk about Pittsburgh, um, there, there are not signs that that's happening anytime in the immediate future. The immediate future being like week one. Um, it sounds as though it's Trubisky, and they're waiting on... Tomlin said he's waiting on the playmaking qualities to show up for, for Pickett. Um, the other Tomlin draft also embraces this. Like, he, Peter King led from, from Pittsburgh this week, and Tomlin's juiced by this. He's not down. He kind of said something similar to Vrabel, saying he doesn't rely on talent. Uh, yeah. Tomlin said, I'm, I'm not sitting around waiting on veterans. I, I don't count on veterans to to carry this thing. So he's infused with energy by the newness of it. They have George Pickens there. Uh, DeMar uh, DeMarvin Leal from Texas A&M was one of the guys that no one expected to fall to the third round, and he's a interior defensive lineman that will help with that run defense. 
um, that fell to them at a perfect spot. Um, intriguing team for down the road, two or three years from now, as they get things working under Kenny Pickett. But, you know, can they play spoiler? Can they be a, a spoiling team that gets in, but really they don't look like a playoff team, but they are? They were last year. Well, somebody's going to do it. Yeah, exactly. Well, and then here's the one that kind of goes against my opinion that they're going to take a, a step back this year and not be a factor anywhere is the fact that we mentioned this last week. You could argue they're improved now at quarterback. Yes. From Roethlisberger, a Hall of Famer. On either, either guy. Either one. Kenny Pickett or Trubisky, because Roethlisberger was just a shell of himself Bye. last season. Bye. 